Hello, everyone. Welcome along to the second episode uh, episode of uh, if Insights with IFRA. I'm your host, Alex Goldschmidt, and I'm welcoming along our second guest, uh, one of 32 drivers with this German back squad. It is, of course, Impulse Racing, and Martin Ashart uh, joins me uh, from the Netherlands. Uh, hi, Anavant, uh, Martin. Good to see you. Uh, glad to see that you guys have gotten on the grid for the GSI Endurance Series presented by IFRA with the 157 uh, Mercedes AMG GT3 that will be in the GT3 Pro class for the 2022 2023 season. And then a bit of a, an influx for the HyperX Club Sports Series. Uh, the Porsche 911 uh, 992 Cup car, the number 15, uh, a double assault with two Veloster and uh, Hyundai TCR, T TCR cars, and the teams entering GT4 in, in the 157 Mercedes AMG. Um, firstly, um, how's things? Uh, because I bet you guys are glad to be one of the 190 plus teams that have signed up for all the leagues for the 2022-2023 season. Yeah, it's nice. First of all, thanks for, uh, for having us in the, in the podcast. It's a pleasure. Uh, one of the early episodes, so uh, we're looking forward to, to have a chat and let everyone know who we are a bit more for the guys who don't know us yet. And um, yeah. considering IFRA, we, we, we like to be in full force in this series. We, we enjoy this series a lot, uh, especially this safety car feature makes it every year so much fun. So this is, I think, our uh, third year we, we participate, mm -hmm. at least in the TGR class and the, in the pickup class. And uh, the GT3 is in the Endo classes. Uh, even at, we had LMP2s and, and this year we, we started with our GT4 squad. So we want to enter uh, enter one as well. I think that one has yeah. to go for pre pre quality, so we hope that's all all going to be sorted uh, and nicely, and the guys do a good job. And then um, yeah, you will see a lot of impulse in the races, hopefully, and hopefully in the front. <laughs> Indeed, indeed. Of course, so obviously, first of all, I had a really, really good chat with uh, Ifra's uh, Gaspar de Court uh, on the opening episode, talking about the the new safety car procedure, obviously, with regards to the penalty system. Uh, and he said to me, uh, first off, that it was very, very well received. I mean, uh, you guys at Impulse um, seem to be very, very on board with, with this new sort of system that Ifra have decided to implement for the 2022-2023 season, that if you have to serve a penalty, if you decide to drop to the back of the field under a safety car provision, then at least that penalty is rescinded. You can then start fighting your way through. Is that something that excites the team? Because I'm, sh I'm, I know sure as hell it's going to excite uh, everyone that's going to be watching all the broadcasts on on Racebot TV this year. Yeah, it, it, it excites us a lot. It, it, it gives you a whole new feature to an endu endurance race. You can. We had last year. We had race. A race, a race in the beginning and we had a, a nice advantage. I think Christopher Ensforce was in, the, in one of the TCRs we were leading by 15, 20 seconds. They thought that oh, this is going to be a comfortable drive and then boom, safety car. And then it's, yeah, it's a complete restart. And it's it's exciting, but it's very stressful as well sometimes. So uh, uh, it, it gives a lot of fun and it, and it works. And I think the improvements, the slight improvements made this year will only you can make it better and make the process good and the guys at IFRA do a really good job in, in sorting it out and uh, running through the process and I think most of the people in IFRA driving are used to it now so uh, yeah I, I only have positive things about the safety car it's it's a it's great fun and it brings a, a good watch for the for the viewers as well when the whole field mixes up and uh, uh, you know, someone tries to do a little strategy with dropping back for, to the field or not, uh, it's mm -hmm. nice. I think let's have a look back at some of the previous results. Obviously, we'll have a look at the uh, the 2022 Winter Series for endurance. Obviously, uh, the LMP2 team uh, finished eighth in the championship, obviously completed, uh, competed at Watkins Glen and into Lagos, but obviously did not. Uh, compete at uh, Road Atlanta, the third and final round, so put them on 182 points. But, you know, looking back at the TCR results, I mean, you guys getting a P3 in Suzuka uh, and finishing fourth, obviously now having a double-pronged attack. I think you guys are, are hungry for that little big bite of that, that cake that's in front of you of, of going for the title. What was what was the decision, first of all, to, to go with a double-pronged assault in, in TCR, considering the results of last season? Yeah, first of all, we even had the double header 
TCR last year. So um, we decided to even go through with it. Uh, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's quite a bit of effort to have two cars in. You have to have the drivers and we expanded our TCR, TCR squad. So besides for the other series, it's just possible for us to do. And it, it brings a lot more guys into into these endurance races to, to, to learn and to, to get better. And then the main car tries to fight for the championship. Uh, last year, we, we had a lot of podiums, a couple of wins. And then the, the first mm -hmm. half of the season was extremely, extremely strong. And then the second half of the season, we ran into some bad luck. We had uh, some two, two crashes and uh, one of uh, at, at, at Solder, which, which was fully my fault, which still hurts. But uh, I think we, we threw away the championship that year, last year a bit. So this year, we, we yeah, just want to win it. <laughs> as simple mm -hmm. as that. We think we can do it. The, the field will be much stronger, I think, due to the, the 24-hour series pre-quality spot you can get. And uh, or it's a wild card even. So, uh, yeah. yeah, I think I think that's really, really good. I understand that from my um, our good friend from Ivra, Pascal, told me that yeah. you guys wanted to enter even more cars. I mean, that just shows the, the commitment to such a championship like Ivra, where uh, a team like yourselves, where there's 32 different drivers, eight different nations um, coming together in the world of sim racing. And I, I mean... People might think that's greedy, but actually that's not a bad thing for competition because any sim racing team worth their salt, especially with the likes of, uh, you know, who you were competing with in, in TCR uh, last season, the likes of Pure Sim Esports, Boosted Motorsports, Leipzig Esports, Team Heusingfeld that ended up um, winning the championship by 165 points after the final round at Sebring with the, with a maximum score in that final round of the championship. Um, there's a there's a depth and a breadth of talent uh, at Impulse, isn't there? Yeah, we, uh, so we developed a lot in the last years. And it all started with, with me and, and, and Kevin starting this TCR squad and Marshall, of course, and uh, just practicing, practicing, trying to learn the car setups. And over the years, we got stronger and stronger, got more drivers, got faster drivers. and um, now we are a team to take into account in these races now, so it's it's nice to have the conversations with the big boys, and uh, we're starting to get there with the big big boys, and, and yeah, it's just pure development, driving practice, setup, uh, and having more people to do those developments uh, quicker, uh, which also led us to decide we do two cars in Ifra uh, again, and uh, yeah. You can say that's that's maybe a bit greedy, but we still have to fight hard with the car. We don't take it low with the car. We want the one two if possible, of course, because yeah, we're a competitive team. <laughs> we want to win. It, it, exactly. I mean, uh, no team in iRacing racing worth their salt is going to enter something like Ivra, where there's such a big amount of talent. I mean, obviously, uh, I have to say thank you to Martin for, for, for giving me a lot of information that, you know, obviously you guys were competing in LMP2 before, you know, some of the drivers were poached to bigger teams and bigger outfits who were, you know, for looking to to expand their squads. But obviously, I think with what you, you guys at Impulse have done, you know, looking at concentrating, you know, GT3 Pro was was a very kind category for you guys last year very very good category and to to stick with the car that you know the mercedes amg um it in that championship is i think a good sign of consistency you know when when you go through when you see teams that there are some that decide well we're going to change car this year and it completely throws them off that path that they've like possibly followed for two or three or four years i mean even with like say the season three when we when we had the new updates for not just the gt3 mercedes but also the gt4 new damage models new uh new power outputs new bops all, all that kind of stuff um that's a good sign that when you stick with one mark that you that everyone in that team knows it, it does help to sort of build that momentum uh towards pushing forward and looking to improve not just season upon season, but race on race in the process. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And uh, what you also see with, with all the classes, impulse drives, so GT4, GT3, uh, Pico, uh, Pico, it doesn't have multiple cars, but then TCR, 
um, mm -hmm. we will drive probably the same cars in, in the other series if possible, because if you just put all the time into one car and you know, trust that the BOP is, is, is somewhat all right over the season, it evens out nicely, and you have the most performance and you just pick the car which you feel as a team most comfortable in, and, and then the development goes quick. And what, what it gives possibilities is those new rounds of Bob and uh, those updates because it plays it and makes it makes a, um, an even level in a new starting point. Yeah. And if you then continue developing, that's really nice. It's also really cool to see the guys in all our classes do do well and do, put in the work and put in the hours, making all the setups on their own. It's, uh, it's nice to see and it's, it's good to see it within a team and uh, gives it gives a good vibe. I mean, obviously, coming to yourself, you know, it's always great to find out about the the journey that you've got on to get to this particular point in your sim racing career. You know, uh, you're currently working as an engineer, residing in the Netherlands, and you, you said to me that you started driving a Logitech Driving Force GT eight years ago on Formula One, yeah. and then four years ago, everything changed when you got immersed into iRacing, you've now become sort of the, the de facto TCR manager of Impulse Racing, helping to get the squad together, finding what's right for, you know, with regards to, like, say, driver lineup, how competent they are, how consistent they can be, can they work on setups together, work it out so at least everyone's on the same page. Um, what was the first thing that attracted you to, to the iRacing platform in general? I don't know if it's just happened back then. I'm a huge racing fan. I was watching Formula One with my dad from as as young as possible. But I have some pictures that I, as a baby on the lap of my dad, just uh, watching everyone together. So it's amazing. And, uh, I just got into the racing games through that lot of stuff, driving Force GT, and I started. Uh, at first, you do the main thing you do it on your own. Then you find out there are some kind of leagues and like forums and lobbies uh, to make. A full season, and then I got into touch with a, with a Dutch friend, and he told me, "Yeah, in my spare time, I sometimes do eye racing." I was like, oh, "What is eye racing? I don't even know this." And he got me into touch with eye racing, and I started at the, with the Logitech Drive Force GT for a little bit, and I found out that's quite difficult. And from mm -hmm. there, things started. And uh, first, I was driving the endurance races only with him, and um, until I got asked by. Uh, uh, another team, she would motorsport, and I went to the team. Uh, it was a small team, like six, seven guys, and I developed. And then Timo, uh, team, our team manager, um, he, he messaged me. He wrote, uh, "Do you want to drive a Mans endurance with me?" And I drove the uh, 24 hour Le Mans with them. And from that point, I was uh, with Inbox. He asked me to join, and it all developed. And uh, I focused on TCR from day one, and B2, I was doing. It was the HPD, by the way. I, I did it for fun, uh, mm -hmm. and, and from from that day, I was just only doing TCR. And Kevin joined, also team manager now. He helps with the TCR manager stuff. I also have to give a lot of credit uh, to him for that. And then since then, we, we work together and we're building this team. And uh, yeah, we try to to do more and more. I mean, obviously, now, from you being involved with the TCR, TCR side of, of Impulse Racing, how many drivers have you got lined up for the, the two cars? Because, obviously, there's a lot of driving that's going to happen in the uh, HyperX Club Sport Series this year. I mean, uh, I would imagine you're probably one of those drivers, of course. Um, are there uh, – who else is going to be uh, jumping in uh, the Hyundai Veloster ends? Can you reveal that to us, or are you going to keep that a little bit of a secret? Uh, I, 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 we don't know yet. It's uh, ah, every, every see, every race. It's it's it's, it's always it, sorry <laughs> sorry about that, Martin. But it's always good to ask this question because obviously the season's not too far away. Um, you know when you when you think about it, especially with like club sport is is coming up for the fifteenth of October at Fuji. Mm -hmm. Um, but actually that that brings me on to my next point. You know, I bet I bet everyone at Impulse in those competing in the GSI Endurance Series uh, presented by IFRA and the HyperX Club, Club Sport Series. I think uh, the, what we'll do first of all is we'll go through them one by one. Uh, and this was, this was actually quite funny because I made this reference to Casper de Court on this one that 
the first three rounds of the endurance race uh, endurance series are taking place at Road America, Cota, and Daytona International Speedway. I, I, I said to him, "What is Ifra doing? Are they doing their own like miniaturized version of the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship for the first three rounds?" Uh, and then you know you, you get to some iconic tracks, Monza. Uh, Twin Ring Motegi, which is a bit of a hidden gem. Um, and then, of course, Fuji is, is the final round of the Cala. How's, how's the team feeling ahead of what's going to be, I think probably, for an endurance iRacing fan, is going to be absolutely drooling with envy, saying like, my God, we get some bloody great calendars here in Ifra, don't we? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really nice. Uh, I, I'm a huge fan of Kota as well. I, I love that it's back. It's also back in a 24-hour series. So I hope to be on the car definitely in those races. But uh, in general, it's it's a really good schedule. You have the high speed, you have the, the narrow track, you have the wider track. And um, yeah, we as these yard are always a bit scared of tracks like Daytona and Monza because it's one big stream fest. And True. the guy who gets away, yeah, he probably has a big advantage. So, uh, yes. um, no, it's, it's a really good schedule. And I think they do a good job in choosing these tracks. Also, putting in uh, Trinric, Montegi and Fuji, those tracks, you don't see them often in, in other big endurance leagues where they mainly go for uh, a seat ring, a spa, and, or mm. um, in Milan. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think one of the funniest thing, things was was that um, I remember watching a couple of lobbies. Actually, I was working on a, on a broadcast, and we had – it was just after Season 3 had dropped, so the new GT3 uh, AM Mercedes was, like, literally on – We this is really, really funny because we had Fuji. We had the brand-new GT3 from Mercedes being dropped, like, that day. So – Everyone was already on the iRacing servers, probably nearly spamming it to the point where it might have accidentally broken. Um, and then I'm on a broadcast and I'm watching the fact that in one in one race, we've got Max Verstappen and then we've also got Nick de Vries in the next one. And the funny thing was, is that, and, and this is one of the things I found absolutely hilarious, that it was the weekend, it was the week at the Azerbaijan Grand Prix, Max was in his hotel room, apparently on a joypad yeah, from the sources. <laughs> and, and and what he did was, like, everyone was being backed up. So, like, literally, Max backed everybody up, and so many people got black flags that they had to serve within the first three laps. <laughs> it was freaking hilarious. But like you say, Fuji is, is also a track that, um, of course, the World Endurance Championship uh, has gone back to quite recently. Um, but it's, it's, it's a track that really, uh, you know, reminds me of the days of old school Formula One, like the late, the mid to the late seventies, when we had the likes of Nicky Lauda and James Hunt competing for the 1976 Formula One world championship at that circuit in, in the pissing rain. Um, <laughs> but it's an, it, but it's, it's a great circuit, you know, super GT, super formula, oh, yeah. world endurance championship, all compete there, but it's great to have it on that calendar. And, I couldn't think of a better place to actually host. You know, you could put any one of those those six tracks on that final round of the calendar, but to have Fuji, where it's got one of the longest start-finish straights, I think, known to man, from Panasonic down to Daiichi, which is the fir- last to first corner, it's crazy how much slipstream everyone's going to be getting. And, that, you know, it'd be like, it, it, won't, it, it won't just be slipstream, it'll be side draft as well, uh, you know, so you'll have probably... You could probably have about three or four at least LMP2 cars side by side. You could probably even have five GT3 cars coming out of the final corner, like literally everyone's scrabbling for traction and yeah. for tarmac and just like literally going hell for leather at 265 kilometers an hour across the start yeah, finish line. Didn't you? Traffic, like everyone going past and, <laughs> between and oh, maybe one wheel on the grass rides would have. <laughs> Yeah, that, 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 that's true. But then also a, a really, really good calendar for, for the um, HyperX Club Sports Series schedule. And that kickstarts at, at, at Fuji, which – so we've got the reverse of the endurance. So, like, everyone on the 15th of October, including you guys at, at Impulse Racing, like 700 kilometers at, at Fuji on the 15th of October. Then we've got we've got some really tight and technical circuits, which I think will add something a little bit different. You know, you've got Interlagos – 
uh, where the straight is very much, it's up an incline, then it's a right-hand kink, then over the start-finish line into the, the center S's, and then down the hill, and then the tight technical sections in there. Uh, Imola, a sports yeah. car classic. Um, Mi- Mid-Ohio, that's another one that's going to put the cat amongst the pigeons. Uh, the, the funny... Yeah. So the funny, the, the the funny thing is, Mid Ohio. I, I just had a look at the um, Ivra Ivra website. So if you haven't already, ladies and gentlemen, and you are new to Ivra, go to ivraleague.com. That's the official website link. Um, it, it's really funny because if they if they had a couple more corners, like say from where the top part is at the keyhole, if you added a right, a left, a right, and a left, you could actually make it look like a dolphin. That's how that track actually looks like. Um, you then got Barber Motorsports Park, and then um, round six, another icon from Japan, Suzuka. I mean, th- these circuits are all going to really test everybody this season, aren't they? And and I, and I know for a fact that everyone at Impulse Racing is like going like, you know what? Another great schedule. We're so looking forward to to getting our our teeth stuck in. And also, the good thing is is that the action is spread from sort of like. Uh, you know, there's the pre-qualifying rounds, which I already talked about in the previous episode with with Casper. But then the actions all the way through the winter period, right the way through to sort of like May time. That's great for for everybody, including you lot at Impulse, because as you explained to me, um, sort of giving me some information before our chat here today. You know, where you're doing like the 24-hour series esports championship, the the digital Nurburgring, lot, you know, NLS. Um, you know the 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 Nurburgring Endurance Series, uh, the i i racing, so I say special events, and then also, uh, of course, there's the the big hype about the the forthcoming IMSA Global Esports Championship, which is which is going to drop um, next month. Uh, there, there's uh, it, it's great for you all because you you not only have a lot of series to compete in on i racing, but it also gives you the opportunity to prepare correctly for every single round, doesn't it? Yeah, it makes it stressful as well because we have a triple header here one one weekend. So that's like bring all your drivers and go. Otherwise, you <laughs> it's tough. It's like you've got to be in your seat at this time. Don't be late. Be there early, yeah, yeah. sort of thing. It, uh, <laughs> it brings some planning to it, uh, really. But it's it's really nice to see multiple kinds of championship uh, evolving and coming around, and then IMSA also doing something. Uh, to, to, to show yourself and, and to sign up and it, uh, last year I racing at the Crefantic series which was official I racing mm-hmm. event if we also joined that one we tried to join that one as well uh, in the last races if it mm-hmm. fits um, it's so much to do and that's also why we keep on adding drivers and, and there's so much to drive and it makes so much fun but it gives uh, a lot of preparation which we try to do over the summer already a bit and then yeah, now the update comes in. It's all different, and we can use wings in TCR, for example. Then it makes it stressful to get get going again. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, it's it's just nice to have such a wide range of championships. And if you want to drive North Slava, you just go to NS, NS. And we have, a, mm-hmm. for example, driver who likes that the most, so he will probably focus more on that. And the others focus more on Ifra, Transcrow Series, IMSA, whatever comes around. Obviously, with uh, Impulse being a, a German team and, you know, the, the wide recognition and the increased interest of sim racing by the, the, the German ASN, the, the MSB, you know, there's been a lot happening. And especially in the German sim racing community. And one of the good things about Impulse is the fact that, you know, you guys are looking to recruit more drivers. Uh, and if they might, even if they are newcomers... You know, there's an opportunity, like you say, there's TCR to, to start things off. And then, okay, right, let's see how you do in a, a GT4. Maybe, okay, right, you're quick, you're consistent. Like, say, after a, a year or 18 months of sort of, like, steady development. Um, I think one of the good things that I like about the fact of Impulse saying that, as per the official Impulse Racing website, by participating in national and international competitions, we stand for teamwork. And friendship, and and that's very very crucial for any competitive entity within not just the i racing platform, but the global sim racing community as a whole. Yeah, definitely. It's uh, it's way more than just driving within the team. Uh, when when you want to join Impulse, you 
you feel to write any of the of the team managers and and you get to put in, in, into a trial and we hang around with you in chat we drive we plan some races uh, which we test the teamwork but most important you have to fit fit in within the group as well because we like to have a bit of banter as well and um we have some events we we like to go to last year was amazing when we went with a big uh amount of people to the to the real 24 hour race at the Nürburgring, uh, a big meetup with, with all of us. It's, it's just part of, of, of the team really. And mm. of course we, we're, we are excited to win in sim racing, but, uh, for us, it's, it's a hobby in the end and it's not, we not getting paid for it. So it has to be a lot of fun as well. Uh, otherwise, yeah, lose interest. I mean, obviously. You know, the, the COVID-19 pandemic back in early 2020 uh, hit a lot of people hard in terms of the the mental health side of things. And, and this is something that is getting talked about a, a lot more. How much has sim racing helped the entire team at Impulse sort of like, you know, keep each other, you know, keep everyone together, keep everyone focused, keep everyone happy, having the banter I bet it was like kind of a release that when you get behind the wheel of your, your sim rig, get, you know, put the racing gloves on and go, right, boys, let's just go into a lobby and just, 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 just have a lot of fun, just muck around and, hey, what, it, uh, you know, if it's fixed setup, if it's non-fixed setup, if it's yeah. TCR, GT3, I bet that was quite a comfort for, for all of you in, in what was a very, very difficult few months. I mean, from myself, perspectively, I, I mean, a lot of people know me from in real life commentary uh, with karting, and you know, for me, it was very, very different. I didn't have, I didn't have anything to fall back on until May that year when I got invited to yeah. start ra- uh, commentating on sim racing. I bet it was very much a good anchor point for everybody in the team, wasn't it? Yeah, I think a lot of people got a lot of time, and they first, uh, I had the thing I, it happened. We had to be at home. All the time, and five o'clock done was done, uh, so to say, and uh, the, the social life slowly disappeared. It was not going to the bar or going out with with other friends, so you were just home a lot more, and it got boring. And then I, I had my sim racing to fall back on, and I started doing it more and more and more and more. Uh, and, and it was nice to then have a chat in in Discord with all the guys. Sometimes there were like fifty people in one chat, and it was also a big mess sometimes. But it was <laughs> nice to have the distraction in the evenings uh, to have some fun and drive a bit, but also to just put on a live stream of a football match and watch it together. We did it as well a lot, and it's, it's still been done. Uh, I think it helped a lot of people in that sense that they filled up their time with it. And especially when the huge, strong lockdowns came, and it, it brought, I think, also comfort to a lot of people coming together mm-hmm. or trying something new. And that's going into sim racing. I think a lot of people also started. So it's uh, it, it helps sim racing, and it was also nice for the team to mm. to have some distraction. I mean, now in 2022, you know, things are a lot more uh, open. You know, there's a bigger sense of, of of normality. You know, people getting back to their day-to-day lives like it was in the tail end of 2020. Um, you know, more and more LAN events are going to be occurring. You know, we've got the ADAC Sim Racing Expo in, in Nuremberg between the 1st and the 4th of December. You know, it's really great to have that opportunity to now go back to, um, you know, expos or, um, you know, gatherings where, you know, the focus is sim racing, but it's also the fact we're just getting to get together. And I like the way that the fact that you use the word banter in this conversation as well, because, you know, you can you can go around an exposition or, you know, have this opportunity to find out what's new on the market, what you might have already been eyeing up for like, say, six or nine months, saying, hmm, mm-hmm. that new steering wheel and that direct drive hub looks really, really nice. I might have to save up for that one kind of thing. Yeah. It, it, it's great because it keeps the community together. Um, you know, not everyone's going to be on the side of a Discord server or on, on a video call like we are now. Um, I think that means that the sim racing community has a bigger opportunity 
Uh, and, and it's not just the teams themselves. It's like everyone within within the community, because I'm sure I'm sure that people that m- will be competing in Ifra might go end up in Nuremberg in, in early December this year to, to see to see what's happening. And it's great because then that that allows a, an opportunity for camaraderie between the teams that are competing in the league as well, don't you think? Yeah, definitely. I think uh, we had a little taste of that when we went to the 24-hour race. Uh, it was, I think I saw made most, I think almost everybody I saw for the first time in real life. So you can imagine that's probably two and a half years. Uh, yeah. And uh, it's going to bring that at that expo again as well. And you meet the people who you only know the name of from the racing, right? So Yeah. Uh, also at the 24 hour, uh, uh, Pablo came by and there were some other guys and even some guys which I drove with, with Schubert, which I never saw in real life. And then you don't recognize them until they say their name. And so it brings the community closer to have it in real life as well. And the Sim Racing Expo is a perfect opportunity to, I think, um, have, a talk, have a chat and have a drink with, with the people you race against or with. So uh, I would mm-hmm. highly advise to go there. I actually haven't been there myself as well so maybe i should go <laughs> well i'm i definitely know i'm going to be there this year so if you do fancy a trip to Nuremberg, come on over and we'll have a chat and have a catch up that's a that's a definite yes, um but i mean obviously now we have to look ahead uh we've talked about the calendars we've talked about the fact that you guys have got you know multiple cars entered this season obviously tcr you've already said that we want to go for the championship that's i 100 percent agree you know you you guys at Impulse were in the thick of things all season long for 2021 and 2022. So having that two-pronged attack is is going to help because that's going to help benefit both teams in terms of uh, set up, looking ahead, what strategies can be implemented, can we do different strategies for each car? But what's 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 the what's the focus with regards to, to GT3 Pro um, in, in the GSI Endurance Series presented by Ivra? What's what's the What's the goal for the team there? Are they looking sort of like top three, top five, or or again, like in TCR with, with the HyperX Club Sports Series, is there a, a possibility that there might be a chance of going for that title? I, I hope so. Uh, we, have a, we have a lot of strong drivers. Dan Leon know, knows how, how to run things, and uh, he's, he's bloody quick himself as well. Um, mm. And last year was, I think, I think they did, did a really good job in the GT3 as well. I think that the fields in Ifra will just get so much stronger this year. So we'll have to see if, if in GT3 we can do the same again. But I think they definitely have the chance to, to grab some podiums. And who knows, they can compete for the championship. I think for every team, it's the end goal, right, to be able to fight for it. So uh, I hope so. I think the goal will be at least the top five and uh, hopefully more. I think also coming to the GT4 uh, entry that you've got for the, the HyperX Club Sports Series, you know, the GT4, the team has already qualified for the 24 Hours uh, Series Esports uh, Championship, which is which is a fan, I have to say, kudos, fantastic effort on that already. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, a, that's a very, very good motivational point for, for the Club Sports Series as well, yeah. because... Um, you know, if there are tracks that are on the 24 hour series esports championship, then at least you can use that information through, you know, a dedicate, uh, an actual de facto race session where you can go, right, what did we do wrong that we can correct here? Mm-hmm. That's going to be quite useful for the team, isn't it? Oh, yeah. And first of all, they did an amazing job qualifying this car in the 24 hour series. You, you have to imagine we just started that. Uh, Tim Geven joined us, uh, I think, uh, a couple of months ago, and uh, we asked him to say, uh, uh, help us set up this GT4. We have, t- yeah, you already explained, uh, not so many NLP2 drivers anymore. Uh, Timo was an NLP2 driver himself. He, he mainly focused on that. He swapped to GT4 as well, and they just started putting effort. Uh, one GT3 mm-hmm. driver told me, I want to try this GT4 thing. And he jumped in and they put in time and it showed the 24 hour series that we qualify where that is a really good first motivation to continue with this and build on this. So I'm really curious how they're going to do it. If uh, I'm confident they can qualify the car if they have, uh, have just a good prep and a strong performance. And um, I hope to see them on the top step on, on a race or, or maybe two. I think they can mm-hmm. do it. 
Yeah, uh, and also really, um, we, we've got to talk about the the cup car entry, the Porsche, the the, the, the number fifteen going in. Um, of course, when you uh, you know when two and a half years ago, you know you jumped on board with Impulse, you know things started developing. You know, um, what's the strength of the the, the the Porsche Cup squad that are or if it hasn't been decided yet, are there some standout people that we might need to keep our eyes on for this season? I think you have to keep an eye out on the pickup car. We, we try to improve the, the, the pickup session, section a bit as well. You will see some mm-hmm. new names. And just keep an eye out for Pascal Costa. He's here from the beginning. Uh, that guy is so quick in that car. And uh, I think he, he, will, he will show himself this year as well. And we, we've had a bit of Fair bit, they have had a fair bit of bad luck in the last seasons in the P Cup with some unfortunate crashes and uh, some uh, uh, yeah bad luck at safety cars, which is part of this series, of course. And yeah. so if the if it goes the other way this season, then uh, I I hope to see them uh, high up in the uh, on the podium uh, a couple of times, and in the end result they will definitely grab a top five. Well. Maratane, thank you very, very much for being our uh, our guest here on Insights with Ifra for episode number two. We can, uh, and I'm going to say this in your own language to everyone at Impulse. Uh, feel success. <laughs> um, as you believed. Um, there we go. A little bit of conversational Dutch there for you folks there, even though uh, I, that's probably as far as I can get. Um, but, you know, uh, from from everyone at Ifra, all the very, very best of luck to, to everybody at uh, impulse racing don't forget everybody if you do want to find out the latest information about ifra it's ifra league.com that's the official website if you want to give uh, everyone at impulse a follow have a look at their website impulse racing.eu and i do have to say it's very very nice indeed Martin. thank you thank very you. nice very spot on but that's <laughs> but that's it for episode two of insights with ifra join me next time as we'll have another guest for one of the teams competing in one of the many championships here in IFRA. Until next time, goodbye for now.